Welcome everybody here in the Zoom room and on the live stream in the Facebook group, The Sovereign Way. We are digging into a beautiful teaching today. This teaching is on, is on the Trinity. What is Trinity? You know, the Sovereign Way involves a, a surrendered, loving devotion to mystery and to spiritual law practically applied so as to live extraordinary experiences and devotion and artisanship, the, the, the art of, of doing, the art of creating, the art of being in relation with bringing things to form. And so we mustn't be afraid of creation or of structure because it is through that that we transmit the essence of God. That is the beauty of being a human being who is also a human doing. So the key to enlightened living then, if we are human beings and also human doings, the key is to distinguish, but allow both being and doing at once. That's why this teaching is really important because without a conceptual grasp of the most fundamental principles of the universe, all of your dreaming and visioning and manifesting and attempts at co-creation and sovereign life is like trying to build something from brick and mortar in the middle of the air with no foundation and no plan. It will fall. So this teaching today will give you the basic factors which will be the firm foundation on which you can truly experience the blossoming of an abundant life where you are deeply known and loved and where your loneliness dissolves forever. So there's going to be a lot of information today. So I recommend that you have with you your pen and your pad, your favorite pen if possible, and a nice clean notepad for you to take notes but remember, the, the, the key power in the Sovereign Way teachings is not in the intellectual learning of information that you must later recall, but in the vibrational transmission. If you have a, an essential oil that's rich in phenylpropanoids, like peppermint or clarisage or even lavender, something like that, that's also great for this sort of teaching. That's quite meaty. It's quite, there's a lot of chewing here. There's a beautiful bit in Hebrews that says, to begin with in spiritual teachings, we're like babies and we need milk. And the milk of spiritual teaching is wake up from illusion and choose love over fear. If you get that, that's milk. And we all need milk sometimes. But once we've kind of got that, to feed our spiritual growth, to, to feed our um, soul's yearning for truth, we no longer need just, we can't live on milk alone, now we need strong meat. And the teachings in the Sovereign Way are meaty. That's why it's important that you distinguish between intellectual learning and vibrational transmission. So although I want you to, to pay attention and take note, it's more important that you are relaxed and willing to receive. So the, the essential oil that is rich in phenylpropanoids, that peppermint or the clarisage, I've got one right here. This one's called purification. Mm. Oh, it's absolutely lovely. It shifts the electricity from the basal ganglia in your brain, which is the part of your brain that deals with pattern thinking. And it shifts the electricity to your prefrontal cortex, which is a part of your brain that you use when you're present and wise and here. So if you have an essential oil, go ahead and whiff that. So you have already made agreement with the notion that you're a co-creator. You've said, yes, I'm waking up out of the structure of illusion and I am now an enlightened, awakened co-creator. And that's true. And your vibrational mastery genuinely can command the fabric of creation. And the word magic, I'm going to put the word magic out there because magic 
is essentially dancing with that one Holy Spirit through what is already created, through what is already in form. So when we're developing our higher spiritual gifts and we're granted greater power over the manifest, then your magnetism is what you use to invoke the presence of spirit through the fabric of creation. That's how you are co-creating because you're using your magnetism, the power of your love, to call the motion of spirit through the form of God, through the body of God. And that's how you create for yourself. But unless you have a grasp on the framework of energetics that all operate underneath spiritual law, that magic can be tricky because energy comes in many forms, including subtle and deceptive forms. And we can easily be lured into illusion while believing we're enlightened. In other words, life is really hard, but that doesn't need to matter because we have a savior pre-programmed into the collective consciousness. And that is always available. That dynamic of salvation, of deliverance from illusion is always available. And at, at ascended levels of consciousness, that is a mechanic that you, you cannot avoid and you cannot deny it. And you cannot continue going on believing that you can do everything independently. That's just not energetically valid. <laughs> I'll talk more on that later. So now that you're integrating a more and more cohesive mastery of universal truth and endless love, you're being increasingly granted command of energy and elements. That's why you've seen that as your awareness has ascended, you've, you've noticed life is sort of getting a little bit easier even though hardship still shows up, the way that you move through hardship is much more graceful. You manifest things with velocity and purity, for example, problems sol are solved more easily. And that's because you're granted more authority over energy and element as you become more of the embodiment of that universal love. And the mechanics of that, the, what, why that is actually happening and why that works, the mechanics, that's what we're going to explore today. And the teaching is called, what is Trinity? Because it is by Trinity that all of this is possible. It's not a religious concept. It's the thing that is. So get ready for three quick fire lessons. They're rapid and they're potent. So that's why you need to pay attention. Above all, be relaxed into receiving. So, ready? We'll start with lesson one. What is stuff? There are three elements in the universe, only three. There is source. Oh, I'm gonna use yellow. Use yellow. It's such a vibrant and an enlivening color. Three elements in the universe. One is source. Source is love. It's formless. It's endless. It's ineffable. It is the seed of consciousness. It is all knowing. It is the beginning. It is the father. And there is spirit. a unifying field of movement and relation. A unifying field of movement and relation. In Genesis 1-2, it said, the spirit moved upon the waters. So in the beginning, God created and the spirit moved upon the waters. So if the seed of consciousness, if desire, if knowing, if a decision is this element, then the movement that occurs when love is in action, when God is in motion, that spirit, this is the indwelling power. This is where data becomes energy. There is 
there is power. And the third element of creation is substance. This is form, this is time, this is space. This is particularized reality. So we have source, we have spirit, and we have substance. Three elements, all in one. We have isness, stuff, and movement. We have Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have Creator, created, and the infinite love between us. And this is a triangle because a triangle is a powerful and stable arrangement. God is all these things at once, distinct yet indivisible. So this is what all things are <clears throat> because God is all there is. This is the love of God. 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 So let's look at stuff. Let's look at the stuff. That's the name of, of this particular lesson inside what is Trinity. What is stuff? This is the primordial place where God becomes manifest, where God becomes actual, where God becomes real, form. The third, this corner, this corner of the triangle represents the elements of particularized reality. Particularized reality, where reality occurs in particle. So the differences of potential and separate configurations are made possible because the element of the universe that is substance is particularized. So for example, a nice camembert cheese is very different from a neon light bulb, which is very different from the ponderosa pine trees of the Rocky Mountains. And that difference is possible because of configurations of particles. That makes a lot of sense, that's super logical and nobody has any problem making agreement with that. So this third element, substance, this is God manifest as particles. Now, particles of infinity, the primordial particles, because as we know, particles are made of other particles are made of other particles. An atom is made of all kinds of stuff. Like we thought the atom was the smallest thing in the world until we looked inside it and just it blew up into billions of smaller subatomic um, particles. So the the original uh, particle, of, uh, particle of infinity is called an adamantine particle. It comes from the root adamant, which means firm, or adam, which is first, the first manifestations of God, the first sons of God. And the adamantine particle or all the adamantine particles are literally the body of God, for they bring divine will into manifestation. So everything that you look at, everything that you taste, everything that is in your reality is a configuration of adamantine particles. It's finer than the atom, it's finer than any of the atom's component parts. It's the ultimate simple particle, the irreducible building block of the universe. And in science, it's called the Higgs boson particle or the God particle. 
because this particle is prior to the existing family tree of particles, which is why it's so hard to translate it scientifically. We're really close, we're really close to pinpointing in science what the Higgs boson particle is. We, have, we know conceptually that it exists. And we've got all kinds, I mean, we've invested trillions of dollars into scientific research to isolate and identify that adamantine particle. It creates mass, you see, where all other, all other particles that we can identify are a result of mass. But the adamantine particle itself commands and supplies all derivative combinations of itself. This is powerful stuff. So this is God manifest as one particle. Look at this uh, sand. This is a, <clears throat> where's my little pot of sand? Here it is. This is sand from Siesta Beach in Sarasota, Florida. It is extremely fine. It's finely ground crystal quartz. It's super, super fine. It's like powdered sugar. Oh, it's absolutely lovely. And so imagine that in this little jar here of, of sand, imagine that all of these individual particles are adamantine particles. Imagine that each grain of sand is an, is an adamantine particle. And then imagine that all of creation, imagine that the Sahara, right? Imagine this vast, vast expanse of infinite grains of adamantine particles, and that is what the created universe is. So close your eyes for a moment and imagine that you're in this giant uh, desert of, of infinite particles of sand. And imagine, just watch, you don't have to do anything, you don't have to create or control anything, just watch as the wind shifts these sand particles and creates these vast dunes of sand in different shapes, depending on the direction of the wind. And imagine that it is God's will, God's knowing that directs that wind to create different shapes of sand dunes made up, each one made up of an, of an, an uncountable measure of individual particles of sand. That's what we're talking about here. Imagine the undulating, rolling, forming shapes of sand and see how some of these sand dunes take great shapes and then notice that they are released as well from those shapes and they become something else. Consciousness knows a shape. Spirit, the breath, the power, the love in motion moves the shapes and the adamantine particles make the shapes. Don't be afraid of structure. Don't be afraid of shapes. Don't be afraid of religion or politics, or pharmacy, or medicine. Don't be afraid of education systems, of traffic systems, of cultural agreements. Don't be afraid of structure. Just know what it is and understand that structure is mortal. So it has no command over your life. Those sand dunes that are pulled into creation will be released. So they have no authority over your essence. Essence is immortal. So that's where true command comes from. So see, see there, one more time, look at this configuration and see that it is consciousness. It is pure love that commands the spirit to create the shape, the, the shape becomes a particularized reality, a universe of creation. But that creation, that structure, that is, immortal, that is mortal. That will fall, it will crumble, it will fall, it will betray you. But the essence of what God is, that is immortal. 
you know, when, when my family became homeless in 2018, we lost, we, very quickly, we lost everything. We didn't have a lot of time to prepare. We didn't have a lot of time to build. We didn't have a lot of time. We had nothing, actually. It was like that. The sand dune of our reality had been blown away by the wind, by the hurricane, Irma, actually. It had been blown away by that. And very quickly, we found out that in order to survive, we needed to tap into the essence of home. We needed to know very quickly the difference between home and house. So that when there was no structure for us to have a home inside, we still had home. And by focusing on home, which is an immortal essence, we were very quickly able to recreate house, which is a structure in which essence can abide. We lost the structure that we could live in as a little tiny family with a six-year-old and a two-year-old. We lost the structure for our home. We called on a barn. We lived in a barn for a little while. And because we were able to sit there in the essence of home, meditating together, playing Scrabble together by the fairy light, smelling the, the essence of the essential oils and just being in the essence of home, we were only there for 10 weeks before suddenly manifest out of the infinite sand dunes of the Sahara Desert was a mansion on 180 acres of Rocky Mountain splendor and a beautiful woman who let us live there for seven months, almost rent free. Because the structure of house came from the essence of home. Now we could have done it the other way around. We could have tried to create the essence, uh, to create the structure of house in the manifest world, the traditional way. We could have put the kids into factory schools. We could have applied for section eight housing. We could have tried to work our way back up through the structure, in the structure. And we may have had some success, but it would have been temporary because all structure is temporary. But because we understood the relationship between house and home and we focused instead on the essence of home, our lives were totally transformed with a flick of a finger. So you are these three elements. You are a totality recapitulated, your totality of three recapitulated as one. And the extent to which you know that and embody that knowing, that's your log of consciousness. And the log of consciousness is what dictates your power of magnetism. So the more you truly get that you are this trinity, the more authority you have at, in, in loving command to call creation into being, to call a house out of the essence of home. Look at the diagram again and notice the arrangement. Love is at the top. Turn that off. My alarm just went off. Love is at the top. The spirit resonates to the love and the spirit is the power to move substance. So by the spirit, love commands the adamantine particles. And from this, all of creation has occurred. All creation has occurred. Now lesson two, consciousness shapes substance, right? It is the consciousness of the one source. It is the knowing, it's the desire, it's the, the will to act, not the action, but the will to act that activates the power that creates. So we have to look at consciousness. That's the, the top of the triangle here. The source is the almighty creator, the father, the one God. And it's irrelevant what religion you think you belong to or what religion you think you're avoiding. There is one source. And that source is to creation what sun is to life on the earth. And yet the truth of this light is so brilliant that only its halo can be perceived. So it says in the Bible, you can't look upon the face of God. You cannot actually truly define the true nature of what this source is, but the effects of its presence can be perceived. 
And from that love, from that infinite abiding, never ending, immeasurable love, from that love, you are created. Like a ray of light, you are an entity of that love and you are known and always will be known by the nature of your love. And you see your love is very different from your mother's love and it's very different from your husband's love and it's very different from your wife's love. And it's very different from the love of Stacy in third grade. It's your love and it's your unique essence. And you are known by the nature of your love and your love is what emanates into the world like a fingerprint. It's your love that, that calls, your, calls the one spirit to create the substance in accordance with your consciousness. But love is the essence of your true beingness. It's not something you do. It's not something you give. It's not something you receive or don't receive or don't have enough of. It's not an energy. It's not a derivative substance. It's not something you must earn or find. Love is who you are. And that's what makes it unconditional. When we speak of unconditional love, it's not about something you must do unconditionally. Because life and reality out here in particularized substance has conditions. That's a, that's a part of it. It's part of structure. Structure has conditions. That's what makes structure work, right? Think of a kaleidoscope. The only reason a kaleidoscope is beautiful is because each individual fragment has limitations. Those limitations are conditions. So when we speak of unconditional love, we're not denying limitation. We're not denying condition, but we're saying that, that love is your origin. And you cannot escape the fact that you are loved and lovable forever. Try as you may, you will never be separate from that source of love that sustains you. So when love is the, is the true flavor of consciousness and knowing is the activating power of creation, now you have shifting sand dunes that are pleasing and pleasurable and the garden of Eden coming into blossom through your life. Let's look very quickly at how knowing shapes creation. Okay, so this is everything. Now let me, let me represent everything again. It's so easy to draw everything when you have these models. <laughs> so this field, I'm gonna represent everything as this field. This is God. This is source. This is consciousness. This is knowing. This is that infinite love from which you are emanating as one individualized ray and this aspect right here is spirit because it is power, it's God in motion. So here we have love commanding the power, commanding power to create, infinitely creating, infinitely creating, never ending, always creating. And that spirit of creation is moving through your particular Remember that word particular, particular of particle, particularized, your particular framework of consciousness, which means there are limitations, there are conditions, there are edges of what is available to you. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't be afraid of limiting beliefs. They could be saving your life. <laughs> And so your consciousness has these, uh, fr is created of a framework of limiting beliefs that limit um, what God is through you. And an infinite, infinitely creating spirit, the breath in the Sahara is creating through your consciousness everything that is known by you. So this is energy, this is your energy. Just like I said, your individual love is 
is like a fingerprint, the energy that emits from you, thought energy, heart energy, your electromagnetic output, your cellular frequency, that is your fingerprint into the Sahara Desert. So here is the breath of spirit manifesting as your energy and all the adamantine particles of creation are coming to form immediately in relation to what you know to be true. That's how knowing shapes creation. This is from Ephesians, Ephesians 4, 4 to 6, chapter 4, verses 4 to 6. There is one body and one spirit. And just as you were called to hope when you were called, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Your baptism is the coming into knowing of yourself as I am that I am. The Father and I are one. So in the diamond, in this prism, right? Yeah, I, I love using the prism visual because it's like, you know, when you hold a prism up to the white light of the sun, it refracts the sun and it creates value. And that's exactly what happens. The human consciousness to total consciousness refracts total possibility and creates value, value based on limitation, value based on the exact shape of your kaleidoscopic fragment in the totality. So let's look at in this diamond, uh, paradigms and ideas that you've chosen to adopt, such as I believe I'm worthy of commanding substance. I am allowed to choose and shape my life. I am known and loved by an infinitely present possibility for reform. Or perhaps what about I am in the presence of a messianic field that will save me when I have fallen to illusion. Wow. Like if you can, if you can, if we create what we believe and you're free to believe that there could be a function that snap delivers you from illusion when you fall into it. How powerful is that? I had a wonderful conversation. Um, on Saturday with someone who said, I was in an argument, in a violent argument with my husband, and I knew I was wrong. I knew I was doing it. I knew I was acting on anger, but knowing makes no difference because I was trapped in the energy of it. So your elevated consciousness, your, your in incredibly intellectual, spiritual ego is actually not going to deliver you from the energies of creation. But can you imagine that if you could choose to believe, if you could choose to align with a knowing that salvation is possible, that whatever's going on in the system of life, that someone has the power to dissolve the trappings of the world and liberate you from them nanosecond by nanosecond, isn't that a cool thing to align with? I found out that it is. I've discovered it for myself. Blind faith didn't work for me. I needed to experiment and it got pretty smelly at times. But when I discovered that I can align with that belief, I was liberated from $97,000 in debt and I got my house back. Talk about house versus home, right? So if I believe that I am worthy of commanding substance, that I'm worthy of being that loving authority that can shift and shape the sand dunes of my creation, that I am allowed to do that, then that is what I'm creating. But conversely, if I choose to, to make alignment in my data field, in my consciousness, that I can't do that, that this isn't real, that I'm not worthy, that I'm not ready, then that is exactly what I will experience because those sand dunes will take shape according to my consciousness. So that's why we congregate into cultures or worldviews, into religions, into ideologies, 
and while we we interpret the relationship between God and the world, between truth and story, between house and home, and we make agreement together in shared systems and we create from that. That's why we have different spiritual languages. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what makes a kaleidoscope pretty. But there are also other points of consciousness in here. There are ones that have us leaning to pride or gluttony or lust or shame or guilt or patterns of addiction or whatever the shit it is. And creation is always occurring. It never stops. And there's always a feedback loop from the world of consequence. Are you looking at the sand dunes experiencing the sand dunes and remaking agreement with those sand dunes. And now energetically that impacts your knowing and we find ourselves stuck in the illusion of particularized reality. We're out here. We've used our knowing to command the power to shift the stuff of the world and we're looking at the stuff of the world and we're believing that that's what is. So if I tilt this this way, if I tilt it that way, then you can see that, you can see that everything from this point down is particularized reality. In other words, it's real, but it isn't truth. It's real, but it's just as mortal and as passing as the sand dune in, in a desert. And the greatest error of the human condition is that we train the direction of our awareness onto those adamantine shapes that form as a result of our commands. I know I'm the wounded one, or I know I'm the independent woman who must do it all by myself. Otherwise I'm a failure, otherwise I'm a victim. Or I know that good things only come from blood, sweat, tears, hardship, and suffering. Or I know that I'm running out of time. Or I know that I'm running out of resources. Or I know that people in this geography aren't as ascended as people in that geography. Or I know that nobody understands me because I'm too wise. Or I know that, that, that the, the sand dunes or in the reality of the shape that I've created, that they are what is true and what I must relate to. We look at the birth of our creation and we say, see, I told you so. I told you that was the shape of the sand dune. I make a remake agreement with that shape. I will hold that structure in place. So let's move on to lesson three which is spirit, because this whole problem is solved when we realize that spirit is in all things. Spirit is in all things, including the manifest evidence of all our shit. So when you've created the sand dune that is the shape of you being wounded and running out of time and not having enough resources and nobody listens to you or understands you, spirit is in that shape as well. Once upon a time, there were two men walking down the road together. On the side of the road was a dead rat. It was in advanced stages of decay and it was disgusting. The stench of rot was pungent and there were crawling maggots and flies going in and out of the gaping holes in the carcass. One of our two men was appalled and he said, this is repugnant. Why hasn't the council cleaned this up? We need to write a letter to our, to our ambassador. This is a hazard to our children. It's revolting. It's the Democrats who have done this and it's all the Republicans perhaps have done this. Someone other than me has done this and it's disgusting. And this is the proof 
of what a dirty world we're living in and how everything is going to shit. Everything is falling apart. What has the world come to? The other man witnessed the same vision. He smelled the same stench. He was aware of the same biological consequence of bacteria. But what he experienced was the marvel of spirit. He experienced the constant presence of changing forms, the miraculous way that Mother Earth reclaims all structure and recycles it back into possibility for renewal and growth. The way that had once been adamant, flesh and bone, now became nourishment and fertilizer for brand new creation. The spirit is present in the dead rat, whether you perceive it or not. But in your knowing of it, you have the power to release your conscious hold on the shape of what you've created and allow it to take new form. So this means we don't have to take down the banking system. We don't have to take down the political system. We don't have to take down higher education. We don't have to take down the hospitals and allopathic medicine. We don't have to destroy anything out there in order to make way for the new. We alchemize the old into the new by the nature of the presence of the spirit. Second book of Corinthians, chapter three, verse 17. Now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom to release the sand dunes of what has been created and allow them to take new shape because it is the spirit that releases and it is the spirit that forms. Spirit is power and motion and movement. Back to Genesis 1-2, the spirit moved as upon the waters. There is but one spirit, and it's in all things, it's around all things, with all things, and of all things. It isn't true to think of spirit as a place away from earth. Spirit isn't somewhere we go in meditation or prayer. You don't have to meditate in a cave for 40 years in order to access spirit. It isn't confined to the mysterious hereafter. It's not through some threshold that you can only pass when you die. The idea that spirit is a different unseen realm is an obsessive and dualistic structured thinking. That's old school. That's dit, 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 dit. <laughs> but we know the universe isn't linear. We know the universe is quantum. There's no place where spirit is absence absence. It's not true that earth is manifest and heaven is spirit. Spirit is the unity of us all. It's the constant motion of God in and through all of us, and it's through the oneness of spirit that the miracle of prayer works. That's why remote energy healing works. So in spirit, we live one life of brotherhood in a state of common awareness and being, either enlightening and uplifting or darkening and downpulling, whichever way we choose to be. Here's a nice bit from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 12, verses four to six. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. As a matter of fact, the greatest breakthrough of modern physics, which every other discovery hinges on, was the discovery of this unified field. Thank you, Albert Einstein. Every development in modern physics would have been impossible if not for that breakthrough in consciousness. And the source of all human suffering, the source of all your misery, 
is separation from God. It's in, it's in your understanding of God as being separate, separating yourself from the love that you are, from the understanding of how love commands the universe. Separation is your victimhood. And in a state of separation, you will serve structure, even though it's a frail counterfeit of true order. As a master, structure is cruel. It's treasonous. It's fickle. It'll promise you healing and fame and glory. But it is mortal. Just like that rat, it will die and decay. In, when you're in a state of separation, structure will always seek to master you and it will succeed. But ironically, when wholeness is restored, when you're restored to wholeness, structure becomes a humble and willing servant. Imagine trying to tame a wild Arabian horse. A wild Arabian horse weighs a thousand pounds. It's massive. It's massive. It's a huge, giant, powerful structure. And you only weigh, what, 130, 150, 100? Not a lot. So in separation, you will have to resort to controlling that horse with fear of punishment, because otherwise it will outpower you. It'll overpower you every single time you try to get it to do what you want it to do. You cannot control life. It is too big for you. It's way bigger than you can handle. But if you become one with the horse, now you outweigh the horse by 130 pounds and your will becomes its will, and the two of you become the expression of desire. And the reason for this is the universal law of command. Love commands the one spirit. It commands the adamantine particles of the created universe. It commands your heart, it commands all of life. So when you've separated from that power, you resort to ploys for control. And therein is the leverage that structure has over you. As long as you seek to control life or you think you can, you will grovel for structure. And structure will hold you in its grip. I am the wounded one. It's my witch wound because of the burnings of the witches in the 1600s. I'm, I'm owned by my job. I can't leave the job because I need to make the money to uphold the lifestyle that I think I need to have. It will, it will hold you in its grip. And the tragedy of this pursuit is that you will never control life. You never will. It's too big. It's a wild Arabian horse in an infinite desert of adamantine particles. But a child of God, a child of God knows that she has the greater power to command life. She becomes one with the wild Arabian horse. She becomes one with life itself. A child of God is the manifestation of source and spirit through the substance, in the substance and through it. You are love. You are knowing you are love. And you have great magnetic spiritual authority to shift the sand dunes of creation to glorify the Father through the Son, to be a demonstration of the infinite truth that there is but one God, the Trinity. Source, spirit, and substance in one. Jesus Christ knew this. 
He was the manifestation of God, 100% love in form. And he had the command to turn water into wine. Here's another little bit. This is my favorite bit. This is John 14 verses 19 to 20. In a little while, the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also live. And on that day, you will know that I, that I am in my father and you are in me and I am in you. <laughs> Hallelujah and amen. <laughs> Thank you very much for learning about Trinity, for deepening your command of source and spirit and substance and for being willing to, to baptize yourself into that knowing that I am in my father and he is in me and I am in you. If you were with us, if you're in the, in the Oasis, if you're part of our monthly support system, thank you very much for supporting our ministry. And if you're in that monthly support system, on Friday, I'm going to give you a mastery technique to help you choose a new shape, to help you command sh substance into new shapes. Uh, last Friday, we discussed a technique for releasing those shapes, for forgiving what has already created and we're building on that this Friday with an energy technique for choosing new shapes new creation so this is stunning stunning work and that's going to be on Friday at 12 p.m that's for our monthly supporters Matt is going to post the link in the live stream if you want to become a monthly supporter of this ministry and you want to learn even more mastery techniques and truly become embodied in your spiritual power then please follow that link and consider joining us on a monthly basis coming up in the sovereign way this is our free group for everybody if you if you can't be a, a financial contributor to this ministry don't worry you are allowed to learn from us so in the sovereign way group Coming up on Wednesday, Reverend Maria and Pastor Matt are going to dissect and synthesize today's teaching, and they're going to bring in real world examples of, of when this works and, and how things fall apart. And this is a great way for you to just join in the conversation, be a part of the conversation and make this very utterly real for you. And that's coming up on Wednesday. On Thursday, we have life mastery coaching for our monthly supporters. So you're gonna bring your real world issues and we're gonna talk through them. That's led by Pastor Matt, who has years and years and years of experience coaching people across thresholds. He's been a progression coach for, for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. Uh, a, a really, really great resource for you to bring actual real issues that you're dealing with. And then and we will help you through those. Um, so that's a quick breakdown of what to expect this week. I'm going to now end the live stream and our monthly supporters are, can remain on the live Zoom call. And we're going to uh, talk, through, talk through some stuff. We're going to pray together. We're going to uh, answer some questions, go some deeper into the teachings. And, uh, and that's going to be it. So, oh. beloved one father, beloved one spirit. Beloved one son, the God of all living in and through us, bless every viewer on the live stream, bless every participant in the Zoom room, bless us all with the baptism of knowing who we are and come to life through the fabric of our world so that we can be astonished at your lively working will and the tremendous ways that you can bring new things into form, turning the dead rats in our gutters into fertilizer for growth and opportunities to learn new in new ways. Beloved Father, thank you for your presence and thank you for your promise that we will never run out 
of adamantine particles, that there will always be water to drink from the wellspring and that we will never ever thirst for all these things and infinitely more. I say thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, the truly embodied God as human. Amen. Thank you for joining us. See you on Wednesday.